refilling my water. And then we're getting started. Okay, friends. Oh my goodness. I'm dressed not very nicely. That's okay. Okay. We're doing a wavy hair routine today. I'm taking my meds. I'm Jack. Let's do this. Technically, we have five minutes before we get started. So I think I'm going to start off by talking about what is the difference between mousse and gel. So we're going to talk a little bit about that while we're getting ready to get started today. Why would you choose mousse over gel? So first of all, they can be used together, just like all wavy and curly hair products. You can literally do any combination on the face of the earth that strikes your fancy. Uh, some are going to be more effective than others, but in general, uh, a lot of mousses, especially if they're targeted to curly hair, I feel like I have huge bags under my eyes. Um, I maybe do. I didn't sleep very well last night. My dog woke me up like every hour. Mousses in general are going to be very lightweight, but if you have one that's kind of a definition mousse, a curl mousse, a curl activator mousse, typically they also have some sort of hold in them, like a gel, sort of. And that means it might create a cast on your hair, like that kind of stiffness and crunchiness uh, that you then want to like scrunch out afterwards to regain the softness from your hair. Um, so you, that means some mousses are going to give you some hold. I would say the difference is mousse in general is going to give you more volume because of the consistency of it um, and just kind of the way it's formulated. It's very, very lightweight. So if you have curls that tend to very easily be weighed down and they need a little help, so you're, you're more kind of on the wavy side, you need a little help for those spirals to hold. Maybe your hair is very fine uh, or just extremely high porosity, something like that. Uh, then a mousse might really be a good friend of yours because it's not going to weigh down your hair. Also, in general, hair that is more on the wavy side, less in the curly side, um, is going to like lighter weight products. Like that's what it wants. It wants to be full of volume and not get weighed down. So mousse, again, gonna be your friend for all of that. If your hair is more on the wavy side or like generally prefers lightweight products, I would still sometimes incorporate a, a gel if you're struggling with that longer term hold, but it can be a good idea to mix it with a mousse so that you can use less gel um, because gel for a lot of people can weigh down their hair and just be very heavy. And also if you're air drying, that's the other thing. So if you're blow drying your hair, you can get away with using products that are much, much heavier. I don't know what it is about air blow drying, I guess it just like breaks it up and like really dries it out so that it doesn't look so like heavy and kind of oily or greasy in your hair. So you can usually get away with using heavier products, maybe even products that are slightly too heavy for your hair if you're diffusing. If you're not, if you're air drying, you're gonna wanna take it, like rein it in hard if you've got wavy hair or hair that prefers lighter products in general. And that's when I'm doing like a full air dry routine, that's one of those times I love to just stick with a mousse on its own. And just if the waves that are curls are gonna like fall into waves throughout the day, then that's, that's the vibe we're going with if I'm doing an air dry. Um, generally an air dry result is gonna be less curly anyways than uh, curly hair. Okay, so it is coming up on 11 now. So we're gonna get started. We were just talking a little bit there about the difference between gel and mousse. So what are we, let's talk about what we're doing today. Um, I am feeling like trash today. So we're keeping it pretty simple. So I'm going to show you kind of like an easy beginner wavy hair routine. Um, I got out of the shower. I did deep condition today. I had a bunch of products that were gifted to me by Camille Rose. So I wanted to try them out before I like started filming with them. I use leave-in conditioner every time I style my hair, which is every wash day. Um, typically I wash my hair every like four to six days, depending. So today I used the Lust Brands shampoo, step one shampoo, because it is very moisturizing and my hair loves a moisturizing shampoo. Um, and then I used, I went, I skipped the conditioner because I was being lazy and I went straight to the deep conditioning mask, but that Camille Rose gifted to me. Now I've got to say like, I don't like mint chocolate. So I don't know why this is the best thing I've ever smelled in my life. 
because I'm pretty sure it's like a minty chocolate. I don't know if anybody's ever smelled this, if they can put their finger on like what exactly it is, but it's like maybe if candy cane and like um, vanilla pudding had a baby, I don't know. It smells really, really good. And it's like really thick and luscious when you put it on your hair. Anyway, so this is what I use in the shower. Um, and then we're gonna go in now with a leave-in conditioner. I really like this Evolve leave-in conditioner. It's the Smart Curl one. And the reason I like it is because it has heat protectant built in and yet it's silicone free. Um, so you definitely wanna make sure that you either have heat protectant built into some of your hair products or that you're adding a heat protectant. And a lot of curly folks, some curly folks like to avoid silicones at least at certain points in their hair routine. Um, for lots of reasons. Silicones can wait, like build up on your hair if you're not clarifying regularly. If you are clarifying regularly, some people really like using silicones. It can stop your hair from getting too frizzy or from uh, like getting huge in humidity. So there's pros and cons to silicones. But in this case, at this point in my hair routine, I would prefer to have no silicones. And so I do really like this Evolve uh, leave-in conditioner. It's very light and it's a spray on, love it. I've never used this. Again, Camille Rose just gifted me a bunch of products. So this is a four-in-one styler. They're calling it a spiked honey mousse, but on the back, they're calling it a foam. Mousses and foams are not the same thing, but we're gonna play around with it. It says free of parabens and phthalates. No idea what that is. It's got honey. It's definitely, I'm thinking, going to be moisturizing because it's full of humectants. Can you last four days without washing your hair with COVID around? Yes. I don't know what you mean by that. Um, as far as, like, I definitely am not a scientist about COVID, but my understanding is COVID isn't living on surfaces a very long time, I thought. Um, but I could be wrong about that. Um, okay, so we're going to start with absolutely saturated hair. So because I did shower, like, I got out of the shower maybe 25 minutes ago, so you can see things are starting to air dry here. Um, so it's a good idea to just grab a spray bottle or a mister. This is my mister from, it was gifted to me by Lust Brands, um, but this type of bottle you can buy at a lot of different places. Um, during curl refreshes or wavy hair refreshes, it can be really nice to have a mister instead of a <coughs> spray bottle um, because it will very evenly distribute the water to your hair. So if you just wanna like overall dampen and not saturate any specific parts of your hair, it can be nice to have one of these mist bottles. Okay, so I'm gonna go in all over once the, it's really just the top that was starting to dry. My hair was already detangled in the shower, so it should be relatively detangled already. Um, and then we're gonna go in with my Smart Curl. This one, it sprays relatively fine. So it's unusual for me to spray products directly onto my hair. Usually I spray them onto my hand first, but this one does go on quite like misty and fine, so it does distribute well. Uh, so I do do the first pass just spraying right on and then I do one in my hands to make sure I got everywhere else I still have my nails on from the wedding, but they won't like finish coming off. So my hair keeps getting stuck in them um, Okay, so once we've added that oh if your leave-in conditioner is too heavy for your hair or if you're using like a curl cream instead of a leave-in conditioner and that's too moisturizing for your hair you might struggle to get a cast later on. So that's another reason that I haven't talked about too often about why your cast might not be forming. I know a lot of wavy folks you like to use curl creams. I do experiment with them from time to time, but remember, you know, generally curl creams are for curly hair. You can use them, but you're probably gonna wanna dilute them and use pretty minimal amounts. Um, now, that's a generalized statement. There are a lot of curl creams out there. Some of them are meant for wavy hair. Some of them are much lighter, but just keep in mind consistency wise, those like milkier products are typically meant for milkier, like creamier products. The lighter ones are meant for wavier hair. And like the butters and the oil, like the heavier oils are gonna be more for um, curlier hair. The like very curly, like curl starting at the root. Um, if you use products that are too heavy for your hair, you can over time damage your hair uh, because over moisturizing your hair is just as bad as putting too much protein in your hair. Okay, we're doing pretty good, we're doing pretty good. What are you talking about, Lil? I just joined. Oh, we're just doing my hair. I'm doing a wavy hair routine. Um, Ellen. 
So what we've done so far, I deconditioned while I was in the shower. I just saturated my hair. It's not, I feel like it's not even saturated. Um, I went in with my Evolve Smart Curl Leave-In Conditioner. Um, and I did mention I'm not feeling great today, so we're not really gonna do a, like a full diamond brush on my whole head. We're gonna do something that's a little bit more probably realistic for a lot of you. What are some moisturizing products that you recommend? All of the Lust line, L-U-S, it's all heavy moisturizing products. So if you want stuff that's very moisturizing, no added protein, that would always be where I point people. Um, Evolve also has some really great, Evolve H, this brand also has some great moisturizing products. Um, Unite Hair, I really like some of their, like their Boing line. Okay, I think that's a little bit better. Now we are going to section our hair. Now again, this is my first time using this mousse. I'm really excited because I've been wanting to play around more with mousses in my hair. I love the results that I get. It tends to be slightly less curly what I get with less or with mousse, um, but it's like such good volume. So it's slightly on the wavier side. You guys are gonna see um, the results or at least my typical results with mousse. I don't know if that's what we're gonna get today. So the Camille Rose Spiked Honey Mousse 4-in-1 Styler. Oh, it smells strongly of honey. I have no idea how much to add of this product. Okay, the smell is... I can't put my finger on that. Honey, I guess? Ooh, okay, so when I'm adding it to my hair, it feels very thick for a mousse. It almost feels like they put a gel in a foaming bottle. That was unexpected. So I might do then, um, because of this, like for a mousse is kind of coming out really heavy. I don't know if you guys can tell, but like, I didn't even add that much. And it's like very visible in the hair. But it is creating really nice curl clumps. Ooh, okay. I'm not sold on the smell. If you're um, someone who's really sensitive to smells, I would say this is, I'm not sensitive to smells and I find this is a very strong scent in this mousse. Um, let's see, by the way guys, if you find this valuable, you can tap, double tap on the screen. It sends a like and that tells the algorithm that there's some value in this light. I realized the other day, I was like, feel free to like if you find this valuable and my mom was in the live and she's like, how do I send likes? <laughs> Thanks mom for reminding me that not everyone knows. You can double tap the screen. Okay. Weird. Okay, this is unlike any other mousse I've ever used. It's definitely going on quite thick, which I'm really enjoying. It's emulsifying. Like, look at that. I'm not concerned about that. I think that's gonna go away once we dry my hair, but that's kind of nice. A little bit of this product does seem to go a very long way. Has anybody in here ever used this? Um, it's the Camille Rose Spiked Honey Mousse. It's the smell. I mean, the smell is kind of growing on me. It's almost like a tangerine honey. Very strange. Okay. So this mousse is also going on much more, like it feels much more moisturizing than any mousse. Mousse can sometimes feel very drying. I'm wondering if this is a foam versus a mousse. I know there is a difference between the two. I wouldn't be able to tell you off the top of my head what the difference is. Something to do with like hold and definition versus like uh, being like moisturizing and volumizing, I think. Um, so I'm curious to see what the impact of that is. Okay, so I just want to make sure that this is evenly distributed because it definitely did not apply the way I expected it to. So I am raking this baby through my hair. Um, and we're going to do smasters today because that will make sure. So the smasters technique is when you um, add your product like now, your definition product now. But once we're diffusing, once your hair gets like 70% dry, you're going to reapply whatever your hold product is. In this case, this mousse. And uh, in that way... You don't add too much up front, but you have an opportunity to add more if you find that you don't have quite enough hold, but also it just creates a really nice cast. Again, don't even know if this mousse is going to create a cast, but okay. So, okay, I'm, again, my first time working with this product, but I am really enjoying like the clumps that it's creating. Um, it does seem to be easy to work with. 
kind of like beginner friendly, you know? Okay. And then I am doing, there's a name for this technique. I guess it's sort of like shingling, but I think there's actually like a name for it. I just can't think of what it is. Um, but you're, this is like, what I'm doing here is kind of instead of using a Denman brush, I'm going through with my fingers and pushing my fingers together so that it's creating these clumps, right? And then I'm following it up with a praying hands. Really, this is more of like a uh, art than a science. Um, I'm trying to make sure that I don't, I'm not gonna have hair like hitched up here. So you kind of wanna make sure that it's falling. One sec, like this is gonna have to go straight back. I have too much of it coming forward, so I'm just gonna style the back straight back. Here we go. Okay, I'm gonna actually pull up my demo brush here just to fix the back. And I don't even have a mirror here, guys. I'm literally just whoop, gonna take smaller sections. You know when you try and go faster and it just ends up taking longer? Okay. There you go. If that straightens your hair out, give it a shake. Don't be afraid to give it a scrunch. Um, if your hair is less curly than mine, you might find the Demon brush is not effective. Or if you have very fine hair, maybe it just flattens your hair out more. Um, in that case, you can get curl clumps by shingling, which is just running your finger and your, your uh, thumb and your index finger along that section of hair, uh, just to clump it all together and then give it a shake or a scrunch, something like that, which will like kind of flatten it out a little bit less. Um, so again, you can see I'm just trying to get it so that this back section is lying flat so that we don't end up with like a weird hitch there. Let's see, give it a little shingle. Um, okay. Shingling is definitely something that I learned from the natural hair movement. I'm kind of appropriating it there. Like it's meant to be used for uh, like very tight curly hair. Um, so I'm kind of this isn't true shingling. I'm just using that technique because I found it has been really effective uh, with clumping curls. Okay. Uh, so the brush that I'm using here is the Denman D4, but there's a lot of different Denman brushes that you can try using. Okay. Uh, the, the D3 is a really common one as well. I think the D7 is too. Like basically like this seven row is a big one. Okay. And then just for my bangs, I do kind of have, oh my God, look how much it, it uh, emulsifies. Emulsifies is like when it like, when you brush through and it gets like really white. I don't worry about that because usually that goes away. As uh, so you can see, the curl was all gone, gave it a little scrunch and it starts to come back. My bangs, I do give a little bit more love to. Um, but I try to like, make them choose what they want to do because sometimes they like to change direction halfway down the curl which looks super wonky okay decide what you want to do and then we're just going to do it okay yes i'm talking to my hair uh will it help lengthen your curl no uh if you want to lengthen your curl or make it less curly it sounds like you're saying then air dry rather than diffuse um denman brush is for clumping. So if your curls are getting stringy and they're not going in like curl clumps, but it's more like an 80s perm, like a million tiny little curls that have like five hairs in each of them, um, a Denman brush can help clump those into larger clumps. That's what a Denman brush is for. You can also do that weird Denman brush technique. I can quickly show you. Um, this one, which will uh, definitely add a lot more definition to uh, your curls and also can make waves more curly like if you have a natural s wave it might close it into a spiral not on everyone's hair but you can give it a try you will do one on each side uh, so that's what a demo brush is going to do if you want to lengthen your curls and you want them to be less tight i would use moisturizing products probably mousse rather than gel uh, and i would air dry that's going to be your best bet okay just did two there. I don't know, I'm being like so lazy today with my hair. I feel like I'm just gonna do that and we're gonna start diffusing. The, often I would have to go through and brush through in sections, but guys, I do have to say this mousse, despite the very strong odor, not a bad odor, but I don't know, 
does smell very strong. It did really clump, you know, like those are nice clumps that I'm getting. So, um, okay, we're gonna do one, two. This is like that scrunch and pulse technique that you've seen a lot of people do. Um, it can be, uh, create a little bit less frizz than some other scrunching techniques. Scrunch, pulse, I really like this mousse for this technique. It's very like satisfying. I wonder if I have way too much product in my hair right now. I don't know. We're gonna see. And then in the front. Okay, it's looking like it's getting really curly. This would be exciting if I look. One second, I need to dry my hands. I'll be very pleased if I become totally obsessed with this product because I've been looking for a mousse. I usually use the Cake the Curl Whip mousse. Um, and I don't know, I'm just like, I, I do really like it, um, but it, if I use it too frequently, my hair gets stringy. So I don't know what that is, if it's drying my hair out, what exactly is happening. Um, Okay, do as I say, not as I do. I just don't have a microfiber towel or any towel like within the vicinity here. So I'm gonna use just paper towel just to squeeze some of the excess water and product out of my hair. Um, but this is probably gonna create a lot more frizz than if you used a microfiber towel or a t-shirt. I have very fine hair, so when I clip it, it just looks like three curls on my head. Otherwise, it's the 80s. Very fine hair, yeah. Subversive socialite! Hi! Oh my god, thanks for joining. Are you who I think you are? Aw, I love your channel. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna flip it all upside down. And again, I don't want to create too much frizz. I can already see that I'm creating some frizz. And I'm just because I'm lazy today and I don't want to be here all freaking day blow drying my hair. So I'm just trying to squeeze out some of the excess water. You know paper towel is gonna like Soak that baby in. Uh, aw, thanks, hon. How do I fix that? How do I fix that? How do you fix what? Wait, did you ask me a question? Oh, you have very thin hair. So how do you fix it? Looking like three curls on your head. Um, well, so you can try using a diamond brush, but then it's going to create... Uh, uh, unintentional, like it's going to create artificially large curl clumps. So what you want to do if you've got those artificially large curl clumps is when your hair is ideally still wet, just gently break them up or create smaller ones in the first place. So you, you want them to be bigger curl clumps than what they were when they were stringy, but you don't want them to be too large because once your hair is dry, if it dries in those giant clumps, it's going to keep reforming in those giant clumps and you're never going to be able to, uh, to get it to like stay separated and then you end up with like three curls, you know? Okay, okay, so that definitely created some frizz, which is why I would recommend that you do that with a microfiber towel and not a paper towel. <laughs> what am I doing with my life? Uh, you're welcome. Uh, but it did absorb a lot of water and a lot of product. So we're gonna go in now and because I've already created a lot of frizz, I'm gonna start with hover diffusing. Um, normally I start with drying my roots. That would give me more volume. I am concerned about the frizz that I'm already seeing though because of the paper towel. Like I do this to myself. So I'm going to just start, oh my God, really like Daisy Dukes right now. Sorry, <laughs> 31. Pull your shorts down, girl. Okay. There we go. And so this is called hover diffusing. Um, what you want to do is hold your blow dryer. You can have it on a high heat if you've got heat protectant in your hair. It's very unlikely that you are going to burn your hair from hover diffusing. By the time they hit the diffused heat, is actually reaching your hair strands, it's not so bad. So we're gonna hover diffuse until a cast starts to form on your hair. Now, hi Gemini, thank you, it's been a while. Okay, so my husband's a Gemini. 
I'm sure you told me your name before. I recognize your user, but I'm trying to slowly. Oh, sorry guys, I've set those like alarms on my TikTok. So TikTok every like 30 minutes is like, are you sure you still want to be on TikTok? <laughs> it probably just paused my life. Um, okay, the mousse is uh, the spiked honey mousse. So, so far, here's my first in Tony. Oh, I don't know if I did know your name, Tony. Okay, so, um, so far, uh, I've the, the smell, I do like it. It smells like honey tangerine, kind of. But I recognize that for a lot of you guys who are sensitive to strong smells, it's probably too strong an odor for you. It is very strong. I like it. It's nice, but it's, it is strong. Um, now I do, Tony. Yeah, the honey and hair products is great because it's a humectant, so it's going to suck up moisture from the environment around, which can be phenomenal, particularly if you're in a moderate climate, to keep your hair nice and moisturized. Um, but I mean, there's so much more I could say about honey. But anyways, uh, we're, so we're hover diffusing here again. I like tried to like squeeze some of the water out of my hair so it wouldn't take so long to diffuse. And I use paper towel because that's what I had on hand. I would recommend using a cotton t-shirt or a microfiber towel. It will create a lot less frizz. I didn't create a ton of frizz, but it's not really showing up on camera. But there is like a little bit of wet frizz. And I try like that early in the process to have wet frizz, not ideal. If you have frizz when it's wet, you're likely going to have frizz when it's dry. So that's really something you want to focus on is smoothing all that wet frizz. So uh, this odor was a bit strong. However, once I added that mousse to my hair, again, guys, this is the one I'm talking about. It was gifted to me. I just got it over the weekend, so it's my first impressions. Um, once I added it to my hair, it really reminded me of like putting a gel in a like foaming container. Like it was actually a much heavier product than I expected for a mousse, and it really emulsified on the hair. And like because of that, it was like. I don't want to say goopy on the hair, but it was like quite thick and viscous on the hair and like bubbled up like I could see it. Um, so because of that, my hair clumped really beautifully. Usually it would take a lot more work to get clumps of this size. Like usually I use, have to use a Denman brush um, or like a lot of water. I don't know. So. I am very impressed with that. I'm impressed with the ability that the product had to plump my hair. And so it also, you know, seems to be creating the beginning of a cast here. So, and also a little bit of the product went a long way. So, so far, like a couple pros, a couple of cons. Um, because I did create that little bit of frizz, just a tiny bit of frizz, when I was squeezing out the water with paper towel, I am going straight in with the hover diffusing, which is the method of diffusing that's going to disturb the hair the least. I did not use a Demon brush today. Actually, that's not true. I used a Demon brush at the very back of my head on about four pieces or five pieces just to make sure the back of my head fell back nicely. Um, but no, most of my hair, I just, um, I did a technique where you, you run the hair through your fingers like that. So sections are created between each finger. I don't know what that's called. Does anyone know what it's called? Yeah, I'm pretty happy with the clumps. I, I don't know. This might be a, a new favorite product. We'll have to see what the results are like. I was going to do Smasters, and now I'm not sure if I need to. Yeah, so again, this is called the hover technique, guys. If, if you're finding this valuable, don't forget to double tap the screen. It really helps me out. If you want to get more content about how to take care of your wavy or curly hair, don't forget to hit that follow button. You know, okay, I'm done. Sorry. <laughs> but uh, so this is called a hover technique, and it is the technique of diffusing that is going to create the least amount of frizz. So if you are somebody who is like, oh, I cannot diffuse my hair. Every time I do, I look like a puffball. My hair is just like all over the place. It totally ruins my hair. Try this technique, okay? It's not, I'm not saying everyone should hover, diffuse all the time. Everyone's hair is different. But if your complaint is that it's breaking up your curl clumps and your hair gets frizzy or stringy, then try hover diffusing. If you're already hover diffusing, try hover diffusing longer. Keep it 10 centimeters away from your hair until a cast starts to form. What is a Denman brush? So if you're new to Denman brushes, um, 
I have a whole playlist for you that you can go check out. You can see how much I use it. It's coming right off the back. This is a Demon D4. If you have fine or thin hair, you might prefer a seven row or a five row even. I have the nine row. Um, and basically it is, I have a whole playlist that shows you techniques of brushing through your hair to get rid of that stringy frizziness so that what on your wet hair so that it's nice and smooth and frizz free so that when you go to diffuse you're not just adding more frizz to something that's already frizzy so there is built-in heat protectant in my leave-in conditioner that we use this is the evolve smart curl and um, smart curl leave-in conditioner detangle and protect and it does have leave-in conditioner or sorry it does have heat protectant built into it Exactly, time bubbles, you've done your homework. A diamond brush can help get rid of frizz, it can help plump your curls, and it can also, with certain techniques, help spiral wavy hair. You are so welcome. So again, I was really like going uh, all in on this hover diffusing here, but let's see where we're at. Um, dryness wise, Whoo! okay, my hair is a lot drier than I realized it was. Okay, so we are, I was going to try this master's technique because I'm not sure if I'm going to get much hold for this product. I don't know if I should. Okay, poll. Based on how it's looking, I would say it's about 60% dry. Do we want me to do smasters where I add more mousse now? My concern is there's a little bit of a cast, but this actually appears to be more of a moisturizing mousse. So I don't know if smasters is going to just weigh it down. Are we gonna get a cast? Are we not gonna get a cast? Maybe a little bit? Okay, vote, vote. Do you want me to do one more application or no more applications? Smasters or no? Yes or no? You wouldn't do it, eh? The mousse is what's in my hair right now. It's the Spiked Honey Mousse by Camille Rose. It was just gifted to me. Um, I, I wouldn't do it. Okay, we're generally saying I wouldn't do it. It has like honey in it, uh, rice water, Coconut, derived, vegetable, alcohol, aloe, aloe vera. Yeah, I think it's just moisturizing. I don't know. I'm not that good at understanding. Silk, there's like phthalate-free fragrance, citric acid. Okay. I vote no. Okay, everybody's saying pass, so we're not going to do it. I think you guys are right on this one um, because it appears to be a very moisturizing mousse. Okay, I'm just going to go at the front here. I'm gonna make sure those bangs are getting a little bit of love. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna create a cast. I think it's just gonna be like a moisturizing mousse. So this might be kind of weird results today, but I'm kind of here for it. Now, I haven't bothered to do bubble diffusing, which I think is gonna be okay, because if this is just a moisturizing and not like a definition mousse, we're going to have pretty good volume anyways. Okay, let's go in and just diffuse the roots a little bit. This is not bubble diffusing. This is just like straight up drying the roots. Oh, one other option we have right now is I could smasters in some gel. What do we think? Should I smasters in some gel? Because I think there's no hold in this. I think this is just straight moisturizing. Or do you guys want to see what just like no crunchiness, no hold does? Yes to the gel or no to the gel? I'll give you a few more seconds. And if you, I'm going to, first five votes decide. <laughs> Try the product on its own and see what it's like. Okay. So masters would be is my hair's almost dry and you add a gel in at this point, which is a technique you can do to help get a stronger cast. I have no gel. Okay. We're getting mostly no's. Oh, one yes. Oh God. Oh God, guys, it's split. No, okay, that last part is gonna be deciding. We're gonna just try this product on its own. And what I can do, this is a little trick for you. If I'm really unhappy when the hair is 100% dry, I'm gonna use my misting bottle. I'm gonna very evenly dampen the hair. Uh, well, because I've been submersive, submersive socialite. Yeah, I kind of did want to add the gel. 
But uh, because I don't think I'm going to have any holes, and it's 42 degrees out where I am right now, so we're probably going to get really puffy. But what I can do is show you guys the results, and I kind of want to know what the product will do on its own as well to get a full sense of what I'm working with. Um, and then I can always dampen my hair with a misting bottle, really evenly apply that like dampness, and then go in and do like a smasher gel application on just damp hair, and then re-diffuse. You can always do that. There is nothing wrong with adding gel at this or uh, hairspray at this point. That would be very similar because hairspray is a. Um, actually, I have hairspray here. Hairspray is a hold product, just like gel is, but a very lightweight hold product. This is an alcohol-free hairspray. The hold isn't super strong. I would call it like a medium hold, but it can add some texture and like a little bit of hold to your hair. So I could totally go in and add hairspray everywhere. But now I am just curious to see what this mousse will do on its own. So that's what we're gonna go with, and I can always add hairspray after. Yeah. You have super curly, long hair, and you can never find good products. Well, I mean, I'm trying new products all the time on this channel. Uh, but guys, I, this is a shameless plug, but I'm not being paid by them. I just really respect this other creator, Barbara from Curl Vitality. Uh, her account name is Curl Vitality, and she just started a new company in the U.S. only, so I can't buy it, but because um, I'm Canadian. But it's a subscription service for curly hair products. So I'm going to switch to pixie diffusing, guys, just where you go in, you hold your position for seven seconds or so, turn it off, change your position. Uh, probably unnecessary because I already have lots of volume, but we're going to try it. Um, so for the Curl Vitality, no, I'm Canadian. Curl Vitality is, uh, has a curl subscription service that I think is $17 US per month and they, she sends you five to eight sample sizes. So if you're struggling to find the right curly hair products, I would definitely, and you're based in the US, I would definitely look into that. Even if you only do it for a few months, it's gonna allow you to try like 16 or 20 new products in like two or three months, which is wild. That would normally be so expensive. And it's all products that she recommends. So she's not just like taking anybody. She's only putting products in this if she recommends them, which I love that. Like, it's such a great business. I think it's gonna thrive. I know, I wish we could order. Go comment on her page. Be like, Barbara, give us, give us the, the Curl Monthly. So the company is called Curls Monthly and her Instagram, uh, or her TikTok and Instagram is called Curl Vitality and her name is Barbara. I'm totally not working with her. She's not paying me to say that, by the way. I just think it's a great concept. I haven't been able to try it because I'm Canadian and it's American only. Don't forget, guys, if you find this helpful, don't forget to double tap. That sends likes and tells the algorithm that there's some value in this live. You're welcome. I throw out my diffuser before realizing I had wavy hair. What would you recommend to purchase? Uh, truthfully, any diffuser that fits your blow dryer is going to be just fine. Most, even when they say they're universal, they're usually not universal. Can we talk about the waves that are coming in here? This is cute. Um, so definitely just like go look on a Reddit thread and make sure that the diffuser you're looking at buying is actually gonna fit the blow dryer that you have. Um, I have the Lust Brands blow dryer and diffuser. It was gifted to me. I do really like it, but you have to be careful because it does get very hot. I typically, in fact, I'm going to turn it down right now, always use heat protectant, and I typically don't go above uh, the medium heat if I'm actually touching my hair with it. If I'm hover diffusing, I will go to the high heat, but <laughs> when I'm actually touching my hair, I stick with the medium. Um, if you want to buy just a diffuser, I have one linked in my Amazon storefront. Uh, it's the Extava Black Orchid. Yeah, I used it for a long time. The Shark Hair Dryer. I've heard is amazing. I haven't tried it. But guys, I do want to be very clear, like with so many things, the difference between a $2 diffuser and a $50 diffuser, I'm not saying there isn't a difference, there totally is, but you can get really good results with an inexpensive diffuser. Now, to be clear, I'm talking about just the diffuser attachment. I'm not talking about the blow dryer. There is a difference between a super cheap blow dryer and a very expensive blow dryer. There is. Um, 
but this is something that I cheaped out on for a long time. I had a secondhand blow dryer and diffuser that I bought for $2 at a church garage sale and no regrets. I had it for like two years and I was able to spend money in other places on my curly hair journey because I know it's expensive. I know. <laughs> By the way, I, I've started doing it on TikTok as well. I do every Saturday, I do $0 curly hair tips. I do it on, I used to only do it on Instagram stories, but by popular demand, I've brought it to you as well. I tried less brands, but I think I should have got the coily one instead of the curly. Uh, be careful because the coily one I have used, and I also thought I should have used the coily instead of the curly. Is it that you should be using the coily or is that you should mix it with the, the Irish sea moss gel? Because the coily one is extremely moisturizing. And if your hair, if it's not meant for your hair, you can damage your hair if you're using products that are too moisturizing. So just do be cautious of that. Um, when I first started using Lust, I thought it didn't work for me because when I used the curly, I was like, I need a little something extra. So I bumped it up to the coily. I loved the coily, but over time it damaged my hair because it's too moisturizing for my hair. In the end, what I found is it's better for me to bump down to the wave even or the curly and to mix it with the Irish sea moss gel and that's better results for my hair. So if your hair is coily or is curling from the root curly, then sure, definitely experiment with the kinky coily, but just be careful using products that are meant for kinky coily hair if your hair is not kinky coily or doesn't have a curl that starts from the root. You wanna be very careful. Yeah, the, the curly and the wavy are truthfully very similar. The kinky coily is very different. It is a much heavier product. Man, the clumps have really been staying nicely. I apply them separately. I apply the all-in-one first, and then I glaze the gel over my hair um, after I've used like a denim and brush or whatever. I haven't gone upper yet, so I'm, curious, I'm very curious to see. I feel like my bangs are looking a little wonky right now. Okay, is this dry? So there's almost no cast. I don't know, maybe if I used more, if I would have gotten a cast, I don't know. I think it's just not that type of a product. I could be wrong. It still smells quite strong. So again, if you have issues with fragrance, I'd be very careful with this product. Um, it is so soft, but keep in mind, I did deep condition today. I seem to have lots of volume. I don't want to like go upright too soon uh, before my hair is fully dry. Maybe, oh, my lower back. Oh, sweet heavens. There are other ways to do that, by the way. You don't have to be, <laughs> okay. Trust the process, people. We're gonna do a little bubble diffuse for a bit on medium heat now. Wait, there we go. What I do love a mousse for, even a soft hold mousse that doesn't necessarily have a strong hold, great for cottage weekends where you're gonna be getting wet all the time anyways. So you don't necessarily need a whole lot of hold for your curls. It's kind of more that you just want lots of moisture so your hair doesn't get frizz and you're probably gonna be air drying anyway. So you don't want products that are too heavy that are gonna look greasy until they're bone dry or that are gonna create a strong cast. If you're at the cottage, you don't wanna have to wait for your hair to look good until the cast is formed and you can crunch it out, right? You want it to like kind of be nice the whole time it's drying. So for the cottage, I really love a like a mousse or something a lot lighter so that your hair can just air dry and you can be happy with how it looks the whole time and you're not worried about getting it wet. Okay. One second, guys. Oops. Hillary, is that your name? Hillary, hi Hillary. Man, there's so many people who, I think you actually live in Vancouver, but there's so many people in Toronto that I want to collaborate with. <laughs> I'm gonna have to at some point do a trip to Toronto just for like collabs and see how many people I can book. So by the way, guys, my hair is normal, pro like normal porosity, uh, but a little bit on the lower porosity side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, but your thing says Toronto, Vancouver. So that means you're supposed to go to Toronto. <laughs> Wait, you're from Vancouver. 
Oh, okay, you do live in Toronto. That's what I thought. Okay. Um, by the way, she doesn't need any help from me, but if you don't follow Hillary already, who is the submersive socialite, um, I don't even know how to describe your page. I guess it's like a fashion, body positivity, like a just adorable comedy. So funny. Love her page. So heartwarming. Just gonna, you're gonna be in a good mood every time you leave that page. Highly recommend it. Is that your elevator pitch? I don't know. It's just like, it's the kind of page that you'll be in a good mood when you leave. <laughs> Um, okay, so you can see guys I've gone in now for pixie diffusing. So what is pixie diffusing good for? Pixie diffusing is great if you want to get that shrinkage at the end. My wavies, often you really want that. Um, if you want to br start breaking the cast, but your hair is not quite dry, you can pixie diffuse. So you turn the blow dryer off, you put it up in position, you turn it on, you leave it for about seven seconds, you turn it off and then you pull it out again, right? Okay. So, uh, I think if I blow dry anymore, I'm just starting to like break up the curl clumps. Uh, I'm going to show you what it looks like, but I definitely like, I need some hairspray. Like I can tell there's no hold in this. Um, it's just very moisturizing. Like I said, I think perfect for the cottage when you might be okay with very little hold. Um, but, uh, the humidity that I'm going to be dealing with where I live today, like no joke, 42 degrees Celsius. Um, it's just going to get poofy, but one second, let me do I have a mirror here. Oh, it's so pretty though. Look at these curl clumps that formed with no Denman brush. So, oh no, wait, I did two brush curls on my head, right? This one probably. And this one. So that's, that's the difference though. Can we talk about it? So that's, with the one Demi brush did and the curls right beside it look more like that. So that is such a great show and tell of what a Demi brush can do for wavy hair. Okay, natural wave pattern that we're gonna get. See how the curl really starts quite low down. The curl starts a little bit higher up when my hair is not so long, but still it doesn't start from the root, okay? And then when you do a Demi brush curl with that same curl pattern, you're getting a curl pattern that starts much closer to the root. Am I going to take that sound clip and turn that into a TikTok? You know it. Um, <laughs> so, but yeah, so you can imagine how different my hair would look if I had gone through and just done Denim and Brush curls just on the top layer there. It would have been a very different result. Not better, not worse, just very different. Um, so we are now going to do like a quick hairspray. I don't really think I want to break up the curl clumps too much. We've already got lots of volume. This is an alcohol-free hairspray. The thing you want to remember about alcohol-free hairsprays, they're great because they're not drying on your hair, or at least not as drying as like your regular Tresemme. This is a Pantene product, but it's alcohol-free. I've read the ingredients. I'm happy with them. Um, they're typically not going to be as strong hold. I don't know why that is, but that's just been my experience. But also, uh, they're wet. <laughs> the first ingredient is water, not denatured alcohol. So with, it's a lot more hydrating, a lot less uh, drying, but also it's not going to immediately dry on your hair. So most of you are going to want to apply hairspray. And then even if your hair was totally dry, when you added the hairspray, you're going to want to go in and diffuse again. Okay, so I'm getting a little trade away there. That's a very buildable hairspray. I don't want to create frizz, so... You know what your hair is like when you just add hairspray to it. You don't want to disturb it too much right away. This will create... Bye. Have a nice day, Hillary. Um, this is going to uh, create a nice little cast on your hair. So if the products you added, like what I just did, had no holes, this is uh, one of the many ways that you can go in at the end of your routine and add a little bit of hold back, okay? This is also fantastic for hair that is very easily weighed down or hair that um, can't handle heavy products, like it just looks oily or greasy when you use any sort of gel, find a really good hairspray and try experimenting with that instead. You can add the hairspray now. You can also add it earlier if you're someone whose hair is curliest when wet. Try uh, adding the hairspray when your hair is at its curliest point, when it's still wet and then diffusing. That hairspray is going to kind of free 
is it, however it is right then. So that's something you can experiment with too. Okay, now we are cooking with gas, guys. Um, I'm kind of feeling to see where there's no hold, adding a little bit more hairspray. And we are now just uh, getting rid of any moisture that was added in from the hairspray. But you can see that little bit of a cast that it created. Tiny bit of a cast, which is that like shininess. And if, I, if you were to feel my hair, it went from being incredibly soft and moisturized with like no hold whatsoever to having a cast being like a little bit um, crunchy uh, and that, yeah, you're showing up a little bit late, but I'll, at the, once I'm fully done, I'm gonna review quickly what I did. Okay, so that's what the hairspray did. Um, now I'm gonna go in with my favorite hair oil, but my friends who are following the Curly Girl Method, this is not for you, I'm sorry, there is silicone in this product. Um, I don't use silicone at most points in my curly hair routine because it will block your hair from taking on any more moisture it creates. Ooh, so exciting. We've got a diffuser arriving today. It will uh, create a barrier between your hair and the environment. So if you add moisture to your hair on top of anything that contains silicones, it's not going to penetrate your hair. But I do like to add it right at the end like this because it can create a humidity barrier. So this is the Garnier Fructose Sleek and Shine Anti-Frizz Serum. If you join my lives a lot, you know I have been on the bottom of the barrel of my last bottle of this for like, I literally had to like take the cap off and like try and pour it out. But I love it. It's very lightweight. Um, it's like an, it's an anti-frizz serum, but I use it as a hair oil to seal my style, to keep out any humidity. And now I am going to scrunch it into my hair to break the cast that was created by the hairspray. Um, now I feel like a lot of people don't use hairspray when they have curly hair, and especially if your hair likes lightweight products, it is such a great option to play around with. Um, before we got into the hairspray, ooh, I'm excited, guys. So this is really doing a good job of getting rid of that cast. But I do find the cast lingers a little bit more with hairspray than it does with gel. I'm okay with that. It's just hold, right? Um, I can feel I added a little too much hairspray right at the back here. Um, that's okay. We just add the hair oil and scrunch our life away. Guys, if you found this valuable, don't forget to double tap on the screen. Send it to a friend or hit that follow button. Okay, so I can feel in the center here where it's still super soft. There is no hairspray. Here, like here. So I'm just going to go through and fix that. I do want a little bit of hold. Not too much. Okay. The product I'm scrunching in is a hair oil. Actually, this one is, it's linked in my bio, so you can go check it out. It's the Garnier Fructis Anti-Frizz Sleek and Shine Anti-Frizz Serum. I was mentioning it's not silicone free. Um, silicone can be nice if you're in a very humid climate. It's 42 degrees Celsius where I live today. Um, so it's actually a good option to keep the humidity out of my hair. Uh, but if you, uh, you can't save. I think I said share. Sorry. Maybe I did say save. Um, I'm supposed to be posting my lives on my YouTube channel, guys. Um, I should be able to do it today. The issue is I often don't have enough memory on my phone to actually download the live. Uh, but I think I have four gigs on my phone right now, so I can do it for you today. Um, so if you check back, I would say by tomorrow on my TikTok or on my YouTube channel, the live will, will be up. I need some cast. Without it, instant puffball no matter what I do. Yeah, totally. I think that could be uh, that you have high porosity hair. Um, it could be that you have damage in your hair, which is possible. Um, but it might not be damaged. It could just be your environment if you live in Florida, you know. Okay, so I totally, you see how I totally got rid of that cast now? We're back to that big, like, poofy look that we were had before. So we're going to go through all the products I used. Um, one second. Sorry. Let's just, like, do a slightly more flattering angle of your, your best friend. There we go. Um, so just, you guys can't see what I'm doing because I'm doing it in the mirror. But I am breaking up these curl clumps here. Um, in my bangs just so that they look a little bit more natural. Um, I mean, they're not not natural. I just blow dried my hair weird. 
The bangs are a little weird today. They're growing, I'm kind of growing them out and I've cut them myself too many times. I could maybe just put them to the side like that. I think we're probably gonna end up doing that today. Okay, I'm gonna bring you with me. I'm gonna actually look in a mirror because <laughs> often it looks fine on camera, but then I look in a mirror afterwards and I'm like, how did that look good on camera? <laughs> I'm really overdue for a haircut. Okay. Okay. Look at the curl clumps that we got from this. No diamond brush, just using that mousse. What a fun product. This is so great, but it was very moisturizing. So if you're somebody who your hair gets um, over moisturized easily, you'd probably want to be careful. Um, but the curl clumps are freaking huge. Okay. I would love to see how my hair looked with this if it was freshly cut and my shortest layers usually my shortest layers are like here and see how much grown out they are and that would bring all of this up for a lot more volume if that makes sense uh thank you so i think i might end up pinning my bangs back today because yeah they're just at that length now where they're constantly badly behaved I could also just take a curling iron and fix the bangs. I don't know. I don't think I will today though. Um, I'm curious to see how this kind of ages throughout the day. If you follow me on Instagram, I will post a story a little bit later today to show you kind of where we're at. But let me show you in some like better lighting what we are working with. That's some okay lighting. Let's find some good lighting. Your hair is coming together too much. Just take a, you have two options. You can take a wide tooth comb. Where is the good lighting in this place? Okay, I'm gonna find good lighting if it's the last thing I effing do. Um, what did someone just ask me? Oh yeah, if your hair is clumping, like my hair clumped a lot, um, it's a good idea to take a wide tooth comb and just brush through in sections, which should break up those curl clumps while your hair is still wet, okay? And then when you go to blow dry, because um, once your hair is dry, it's going to keep wanting to reform into those clumps, right? So I highly recommend breaking up those curl clumps while your hair is still wet. Um, did I just freeze? Is my lag working? I don't know. I don't know how's that lighting guys i think that's the best we're gonna get i've been to like every window in my house now so we're obviously the money shot is gonna be this one if i had a better haircut more of it would look like this but how to get more volume when doing brush curls Ooh, maybe this is what we want to do i swear the side part is back and i will hear none of anyone saying it's not by the way yeah, this is cute. This one little bang is being weird, but I think that's cute, eh? Okay, I think that's how I'm going to wear my hair today. Maybe I'll even clip it. It's kind of got an 80s vibe, but this is a bit deep. This is like very 2008, the very deep side part. You will never do a middle part. I know a lot of my wavies feel that way. Um, we're very committed to the... Uh, Okay, now I'm loving it. This, this is the reason I'm struggling so hard is because I need a haircut. I need a trim. Um, like you lose all your shape once your hair is grown out. Uh, where do I get my haircut? It is a girl on TikTok. Um, I, she's been my hairstylist for like 10 years. And now she's TikTok famous. So now I have to wait six months every time I want to book an appointment with her. <laughs> but it's worth it. Her name is Mallory. Uh, and her TikTok handle is Mallory Does Your Hair. Um... She's fabulous, just like a really like kind person and you can be very honest with her. That's what I always love in a hair. She's actually a friend of mine as well, but um, I love when I, with a hairstylist, when you can be like, okay, last time you did this, I didn't like it. I want you to do this this time. And she'd be like, okay, cool. Like, she's not offended. She's like, yeah, this is a collaboration. We're deciding together how to do your hair and like, it's cool. And that's what I want in my hairstylist. Um, someone that we can work with because you know, if you're going to have the same hairstylist for like 10 years, there's going to be like 99% of the time you're going to love it. But at some point there's going to be something they do that like is objectively beautiful, but not your vibe. Right? So you need to be able to give that feedback to your hairstylist. And that's why I love Mallory. She's a phenomenal hairstylist. What mousse did I use? Okay. So I'm just like showing off one more time. 
freaking love these results and what I think what I like about them is they're very very soft and I do feel like that wasn't such an ordeal like the clumps are so nice and large but I didn't have to use a Demon brush so that's why I'm loving this mousse the mousse was Camille Rose a uh, honey mousse I don't know I'll go I'll post a video of it later maybe um but I feel like if I'm at the cottage I could like jump in the lake get out let it air dry and it would air dry is similar you know like we didn't do the most this is just kind of like the natural vibe yes we blow dried it um which did give it like a little bit more definition a little bit less frizz maybe a slightly tighter curl but if i were to it, it's not so manipulated that if it got wet like i jumped in the lake and i got out again and air dry that it would be completely different it would be pretty similar just slightly less root volume um okay we're gonna go to the front we're gonna give you the products we used and then we're gonna wrap it up for today guys not bad yo doing my whole hair on live in less than an hour um who's been here before and knows that that never happens usually i'm like an hour and 45 minutes i'm very very pleased and i'm suddenly feeling so much better because i took all my medication yes okay so we're gonna sit down we're gonna do a quick summary of what we did from the beginning and then I'm going to say goodbye. Okay, so we um, started today off by using the Lust Brands Step 1 Shampoo. You weren't with me. I was in the shower. You're not invited. Um, but I did the, I didn't do the conditioner, but I did do a deep conditioning mask. I left it in my hair for 10 minutes. This is by Camille Rose. It was gifted to me over the weekend and I'm partnering with them. So I wanted to give it a try. Smells unbelievable, but again, very strong for my friends who only like fragrance free. Um, before you hop off guys, don't forget to hit that follow button if you found this valuable and maybe give me a double tap right before you leave. Um, so the deep conditioner, then we went in with a leave in conditioner. The reason I like this leave in conditioner is it's spray on. It is very light weight and it, uh, it has heat protectant built in, but it's also silicone free. So great as an early product, if you're going to be layering on more moisturizing products, um, but also to protect your hair when you go in with the diffuser. And then we added some spiked honey Camille rose mousse very cool not something that's going to give you hold i think this would be fall under the category of a foam rather than a mousse uh nothing like cake the curl whip mousse there's no cast it's just extremely moisturizing for my swathies i'm thinking you would love this when you're not really trying to make ringlets or anything like that you're just trying to have volume moisture like i think this would go great with a blowout swavy hair very light wavy hair maybe paired with something that's going to give you a little bit of hold um i then added because i realized at that point that i had no hold in my hair which is fine it's not the end of the world but it's 42 degrees where i live 42 degrees celsius which is like 100 degrees i don't know it's very hot uh, then I added some level four air spray by Pantene. This is their alcohol free hairspray to give myself a bit of a cast. The nice thing about this is you can add it right in the end if you realized you messed up and you need more hold. So that's what I did. And then I did a quick blow dry to set that cast. And then we finished with the Sleek and Shine. Now this product does contain, it's a hair oil to scrunch out the cast that I got from the hair spray. There is non water soluble silicones in this so why did i use that when so many curlies don't like silicones personally i used it because it does create that nice humidity barrier on my hair so my hair doesn't get poofy throughout the day when it is very hot and humid where i live but if you're using silicones remember you need to be clarifying your hair on a regular basis my beautiful people okay love you all uh okay